As you can see, my index finger is pointing directly to the zone for the heart. Make sure you apply a lot of pressure to this zone. If the tip of the thumb cannot apply enough pressure, then switch to using the second joint of your index finger. Now if that isn't forceful enough, use the first joint of your thumb to massage the area. For someone who has serious heart problems, we have to be careful giving this treatment. Always pay attention to the patient's facial reactions. If the face turns pale, then you must terminate the treatment immediately. If the face turns red, then there's no problem. You can carry on with the treatment. Next, let's look at the zone for the spleen. This area controls the immune system of the body. Now, for those who get colds and infections easily, a great deal of work must be done in this area for them. The reflex zones for the large and small intestine take up a considerable amount of the area on the foot. When we swallow food into our system, it follows a path into the duodenum, then the small intestine, and then it moves around and into the cecum. It will then go into the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and on into the rectum. The waste will then leave our body via the anus. All these reflex zones can be treated as one large zone. For someone who has a problem with their bowel movements, you can emphasize massaging the zones for the anus and the rectum. If the person is especially sensitive in this area, you can use both of your thumbs to stimulate the area. Alternatively, you can do this using the second joint of your index finger. You massage the area slowly, like this. Don't do it too fast. This is especially effective for those who have bowel movement problems and hemorrhoids. Of course, if these problems persist, another way to assist you in solving the problem is to regulate the diet. So far, we've explained the reflex zones for the internal organs. Now then, let's move on. Mm. Now let's examine the various zones for the rest of the body. For example, the reflex zone for the shoulder. If a person has constant shoulder pain, the area below the baby toe is where you should work on. Since this area is quite hard, it's recommended that the second joint of your index finger be used to massage it. Directly below, on the right side of your foot, is the zone for the back. And when you reach the bottom of your foot, you've reached the zone for the sciatic nerve. If someone feels pain when sitting down, the reflex zone at the bottom is where you should pay special attention to. Usually you'll find when you massage this area, the patient will experience a great deal of pain. The sciatic nerve is located in the inner part of your lower leg. Where I'm pointing to now is the end of that nerve. When massaging the area, it's recommended to use the first joint of the thumb to apply a lot of pressure. This area is usually very sensitive. Now let's move to the center of the heel of your foot. This area is the reflex zone for the genital glands. We can find the reproductive organs, testicles and ovaries here. Directly above the area is the zone that affects those who have sleeping problems. Since this zone is very deep into the heel, therefore a lot of pressure is required for it to be effective. If one has trouble sleeping, this is the area that you can work on. 
Now then, I think so far all the reflex zones located in the foot have been covered. You will find that the reflex zones affecting different areas of your body are symmetrically located on each foot. For instance, below the small toe on the left foot, you will find the zone for the heart. A little below that, you will find the zone for the spleen. But when you go to the right foot, you will find the zone for the liver in the same spot. As we know, the liver is a vital organ. Directly below the liver zone, you will find the zone for the gallbladder. While massaging this area, if you feel that there are deposits in it, it is a strong indication that the patient may have gallbladder stones. Now, gallbladder stones are a common complaint. Therefore, this area cannot be overlooked during the treatment. Now then, a normal person has two kidneys. One on the right and one on the left. Sometimes a person's left kidney is normal, but the right kidney is not. And how do we tell? Right. And the way to tell is to see if you can feel deposits on the right kidney zone. That's an indication something is wrong. We then recommend that the patient go to see his or her physician for confirmation that in fact this is the case.